Hi, my name is Colby Sharp. I am a fifth grade teacher in Michigan, and today I'm going to be telling you about the 10, not the, 10 of the picture books that I read my students during the month of September. Because it's fun to talk about picture books, it's kind of like the most fun. That's what we're gonna be doing today. Let me know down in the comments some of the books that you have read recently to the readers in your life. Because, you know, I'm gonna read my kids like 230, 40, 250 books this year. I need all the recommendations I can get. Starting off with the very last book that I read my students this year. I read it on September 30th, Be Who You Are. Because September 30th is Be Who You Are Day. Todd Parr's amazing book from Little Brown Books for Young Readers, all about being the person that you want to be and not trying to be someone else and being proud of who you are. It's just awesome. And you've probably seen Todd Parr's books. You just can't get enough of the colors and the lines and this, ama this amazing dude who was held back in second grade and is now making these amazing books. The B, the It's Okay to Make Mistakes book. Like, I think it sold over a million copies. Holy smokes, Todd Parr. Be who you are. If you haven't read a Todd, a Todd Parr book to kids, you haven't really lived. You haven't. And they are truly one of the, he's one of the authors, without a doubt, you can truly read to any age. 95, five. This book is for everyone. Be who you are, so good. Um, how to read a story, talking about reading at home and uh, you know helping my kids establish good habits at home. I read them this book, kind of like tongue in cheek, uh, like they didn't know how to read a story. But there are some good tips in here. It's super fun. Kate Messner, Mark Siegel all about how to read a story. We try to read just about any book that we can get our hands on that are books about reading. Yeah, also, let me know down in the comments, books that you love that are about reading. So how to read a story, how to read a book, the book with no pictures, the monster at the end of this book. I guess those are kind of about reading in a way, but you know what I mean? Any books that are about reading and the joy and love of reading. How to read a story. Okay, next up. Jacqueline Woodson, Rafael Lopez, The Day You Begin. Uh, the last video I made about picture books was about the first 10 picture books I read my fifth graders. And I can't believe I didn't read this book as part of my first 10. It's always one of the first days of school and somehow I missed it this year. Ugh. That's kind of one of the great things is even when you don't read a book early in the year, you have a lot of other days to, to do it. So that's what I did. I read The Day You Begin a little bit later. The kids loved it. I loved it. Such a great message and it really helps ground me and you know, what we talk about and what we discuss and what we celebrate. You know, we used to like always ask kids, what do you do this weekend? And, you know, vacations and talk about that kind of stuff. But a lot of our kids don't get a chance to do a lot of those things. And we need to make sure that we celebrate them and who they are and all of the uh, good things about their home life. So they begin amazing book. And they, Raphael and uh, Jacqueline, have a new book coming out in early 2022, which I'm so excited about. Next up, this is uh, a new book, uh, Walk in the Woods by Hudson Talbot. And it's uh, a walk in the words. I kept doing that with my students. They kept laughing at me and laughing at me in a kind way, of course. I walk in the words about a boy who, just like Todd Parr did when he was a kid, a boy who struggles with reading and gets stressed out, but loves story. I think that's so important to think about. Like so often we find a way to like drive the love of story out of kids who maybe don't have a ton of success as readers yet at a young age. And that makes me so sad because I feel like everyone loves story and we are all just like stories are the best. And this is a book about a kid who loves story but gets stressed out when he comes to a page that's filled with words. And it's just a beautiful book about this kid finding his way back to books and finding his way uh, back to reading. And it's just, it's one of the books that I think will stick. Like a lot of these books, the new books as they come out, we read and we love for a few years. I feel like this is going to be one of those books that teachers read for decades. It's that good. A walk in the words. A walk in the words. It's really good. Oh, it's got Jacqueline Woodson little blurb on the back. We Don't Need Our Classmates by Ryan T. Higgins, one of the funniest books ever. Well, one and also one of the funniest authors ever. I actually have two Ryan Higgins books in this pile. I did not realize that. That's fun. Also Mother Bruce. So these are both super funny books and super awesome and fantastic and hilarious. And they keep you on your toes and you get surprised and you get surprise laughs and out of this world laughs. It's just so good. So that's my, I'm not going to talk about this one a lot, but I will say that this is a book that I like to read like once we've really had like a nice community established in our class. And then I call them over 
I said, we're gonna read a story about this issue we're having in school. And I was talking with her principal and she's really worried about it. And I found the perfect picture book because it addresses exactly the problem we're having in school. So they think I'm talking about like not picking up their masks or bathroom issues or being unkind to each other. And I go, boy, I go, kids, we have to stop eating each other. We don't eat our classmates. And then once they get that, I'm telling them a joke, they laugh and laugh and laugh, and we have a really fun time, and the book is so funny. We don't eat our classmates, because we shouldn't. Even though kids, children are delicious, we shouldn't eat our classroom. So if you haven't read this, the kids are gonna love Penelope T-Rex, an awesome character. Uh, Shea Bob? New Bob Shea book. So this, uh, this little uh, alligator, is uh, hungry but lazy and wants to uh, have the birds just come to him. So he makes a restaurant on his nose so that all the birds will come and then he can just feed them. But it ends up being by kind of backfiring because he kind of falls in love with the birds and then all this stuff happens and it ends up being like his restaurant is like the beginning of a new community, a new town and there's like an amusement park and there's swing sets and public transportation and a book club. It's just really funny. Bob Shea is his sense of humor. He's just so funny. Like you just can't stop laughing. The kids loved it. I loved it. So many chuckles. Next up, Blue Floats Away, Travis Yonker, Grant Snyder. It's awesome. It's to not only tells a story of a family losing their child, uh, so that the the um, iceberg they have this iceberg family but then the blue uh, cracks off and floats away which is very sad so it's like this journey home but the journey home takes you through the water cycle which is kind of amazing so you know the little iceberg ends up melting and like turns into a cloud and then it's just awesome so you not only get like the science of the water cycle but you also get this feel-good story of this character trying to find his way home. So super fun book, awesome illustrations by Grant. Kids loved it, I loved it. Picture books are awesome. Uh, two more, Eyes That Kiss in the Corner, Corners. This is just a beautiful book about celebrating who we are and celebrating uh, even sometimes things that other people maybe make fun of us for or give us a hard time for or people are just complete jerks about. And I love this book and I love reading it to my children and I will read it to them probably forever. The Eyes That Kiss in the Corner. If you haven't read it, it's just awesome. This is one we've been working on writing about our reading. And so we read this one day, and then the next day we read it again, and I had a sticky question that I got from my friend Donald Miller. Uh, sticky question, I like that. So we'll talk more about sticky questions in another video. Uh, but the kids wrote about it, and it was really powerful to see their words. Next up, my all-time favorite, probably, picture book biography, The Oldest Student, How Mary Walker Learned to Read. Uh, Rita Lorraine Hubbard, Ogemora, story of Mary Walker learning to read at like 118 years old, 116, 14, 100 teens years old. The kids are blown away. The woman was born in slavery and ended up flying in a plane. That timeline is just mind-blowing that that could be done in one very long life, but in one lifetime. Kids are inspired by her. It's a great example of you're never too old to try something new. Obviously, uh, it's beautifully done. And I love it. I can't get enough of it. So those are the books that I read. Oh, it's so fun to talk about them. And they're probably going to replace some of these books that I read before up on that shelf. And then we'll read some more next month and then talk about those. So we'll be back again in a month. My name is Colby Sharp. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have an awesome, fantastic day.